Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Podcast Auntie and I'm your host Aparna. Well, today's topic, I'll talk about exciting technological innovation we are witnessing and I'll also share my own journey of entering the field of engineering and technology 23 years ago and the struggles I went through. We'll also cover and discuss how the younger generation seems to be moving away from subjects like science, technology, engineering and maths. Recent statistics from the US shows many young people are accepting now opting for non-stem careers, dropping out of school instead of continuing their education, which is concerning. Do you know every year over 1.2 million students drop out of high school in the United States alone? Now, well, that's one student every 26 seconds or 7,000 a day. Isn't that concerning? A third of all public students now drop out of school even before they graduate year 12. Well, before we dive deeper into the issue, let's acknowledge the remarkable transformation our world has undergone in the last 20 years due to technological advancement. First and foremost that comes in my mind is social media. Look at the way we interact with everyone globally. This has been transformed through instant messaging or video calls, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. second uh the internet has connected people worldwide providing internet access to wealth of information which is a great transformation because now younger generation could just go and find out about things quickly and third my favorite online shopping now with ebay and amazon shopping has become so easy that we can buy stuff in our pajamas which third technological entertainment evolution streaming services like netflix prime spotify they have transformed how we consume movies tv shows music providing on demand entertainment can we imagine a lockdown without these services medical technology has significantly improved patient care diagnosis treatment leading to better health outcomes and the list is endless these technological advancement were things we couldn't even imagine before but they have changed our lives in a way we could never thought could happen isn't it but in order to achieve more future innovation the number of students in stem requires significant uplift from today Unfortunately, the statistics doesn't show an increasing trend. Despite the incredible opportunities the STEM fields offer, it's disheartening to see the declining interest of younger generation, right? And the reasons behind this trend may vary, but it's crucial for us to encourage and support young minds to explore and engage in STEM education and careers. we need new workforce coming from universities to show a strong inclination towards stem and its related jobs now let me share my personal story how i got into stem education and the struggle i went through financially emotionally and socially so my journey with technology started in the year 2000 23 years ago when i was in standard 12 living in a small city in india and of course it's standard 12 when you make that crucial decision of your life which is what after this which stream to choose etc now back then education system has gone through a change but back then in india 12th grade marks didn't automatically qualify you or make you eligible for certain streams. We had to take separate entrance exams for area you wanted to study like engineering, medical, IAS or any other profession and of course each requires specific preparation. 
to be informa- to be honest in 2000 at that time um because internet was not readily available it was not digitized so to be honest i wasn't sure what my career path at that time i was good in maths and science my dad was a senior biology teacher so i thought my career would be in the medical field because he wanted me to pursue a career in that however i wasn't very enthusiastic about it as i didn't feel i was brave enough to handle the demands of medical profession and in our community we had female medical professionals we had female teacher but there were no female engineers as an example for me but i don't know how but my father got me those three physical forms of the best engineering college in india at that time and i imagine myself maybe working in the factory or in a, any power plant but there was nothing beyond this that i could imagine that i'll be in the software world he told me that if i didn't qualify or pass of pass in any of these three tests i could take a year off to prepare after finishing year 12 but the idea of one year break to prepare frustrated me given my patience level but well due to my school studies i couldn't fully devote all my attention to preparing for the engineering test exam i was determined not to settle for just passing since i was one of the good student in the class therefore i had to find a balance between preparing for my school exams and studying for the engineering entrance test so i had a routine really tight one i would say so every day after school which is 3 pm when the school would end i would study for 3 hours to prepare for my school test and complete my homework you know practical viva etc that comes for school preparation after that i devoted 5 hours which some day would go 6 hours to prepare for the engineering entrance exam honestly i wasn't sure what having an engineering degree a career in engineering would entail because like i said there was no there were no women engineers in my city for me to look up to as a role model and i didn't have access to internet to research much about it either well in spite of those unknowns what i knew was that i wanted to secure a job after completing my 4 years engineering course because my goal was to provide financial support to my family and lessen the burden on my hard working dad so i didn't wanted to take a year off for further studies and preparation as it would postpone my job search and independence by another year and i believe strongly believe when you have clear reasons and determination you do everything possible to achieve your goal so instead of feeling stressed i felt motivated to make things happen fortunately my hard work paid off i was ranked among the top 3 students in my school and i also got accepted to two of those engineering colleges out of those two options i chose one engineering college to attend oh well but i ended up in the mechanical engineering branch which was uncommon at that time for girls to be there were other girls but they were in different branches like electrical engineering electronics or computer engineering well um it wasn't so much of a problem in the first year because the first year involved common studies but in the second year we were going to be split and study in our respective branch and i was going to be the only girl in the batch of boys i was super stressed but some magic happened however since i was the only girl in the second year in the mechanical branch the faculty decided to move me to the electrical branch now can you imagine i'm talking about the year 
there were only one girl in the mechanical branch and it was one of the top college in india well i was and i still am so grateful for the faculty for moving me because i can't imagine what it would be to be like the only girl among all the boys in the batch and also not sure how it would have affected my job prospect then because job prospects in hardcore engineering fields like civil or mechanical were limited in those days for girls thankfully today opportunities opening up for girls in these areas too which is great change to see now with uh, that i completed my degree in 2004 and got selected in a big it company it was an it boom in 2004 It was the time that I got my first computer in the office. So I learned to operate computer only after 2004 at work. And it was the time then mobile phones were slowly coming up so I had my first phone. So that was my technology experience. Now if I look back I think if it weren't for my progressive parents my life would have been very different. my college fees were three times my dad's salary and in our small city people often had their opinions and advice back and back then it was common for parents to focus on their son's future whereas girls education was often seen as a preparation for marriage rather than independence he believed in the power of education and technology and he dared to send me into the engineering world which was mostly dominated by men at that time he took that risk for me not knowing that i would end up in the software world so i owe my career to him now in the stem job in the job i started as a co developer i was a java j2e developer i spent 5 years doing that coding and as time went on i transitioned into different roles like business analyst project manager scrum master agile coach my career has been an exciting journey of learning and i'm still working in the technology sector witnessing the magic and evolution of cloud technology in my work life in my 18 20 years of it experience i understand how exposure to stem which is science technology engineering and maths are all about exploring creating and solving problems and how they have huge impact on our world we live in but with that i don't want to give you the impression that i am a super successful ceo a com- of a company or a top leader in my organization no i'm none of those but i'm one of the driving forces behind my bosses and leaders who are making positive changes and driving progress but who knows in the next 5 years i might achieve these positions as well because i'm still motivated and determined i have the right people in my life to support guide me and i have you as well now So that was my story that which began in the year 2000 when information wasn't as readily available there weren't many women leaders to look up to but today you have world of knowledge at your fingertips countless inspiring leaders both men and women who have paved their way for you take advantage of these incredible opportunity i would say urge all the younger generation connect with people you know in this industry and be curious ask them about their journeys those challenges and not turn away from science technology engineering and math subject thinking they are hard or difficult keep this subjects a fair chance and make an informed decision as these fields hold great potential for your future and we also need to achieve gender diversity especially increasing the female participations 
is essential for striking the balance. There was a survey that was conducted in Australia, US and across the globe. And if you look at the gap between male and female ratio in these technology sector, it's a huge gap. Let's encourage and support girls and younger generation to explore STEM. Let's show them how they have the potential to thrive in these fields and make a positive impact on the world. Whether you choose to pursue STEM, which is these careers or non-STEM path, remember both have incredible value and opportunity. My request is only that you give this chance. Don't turn away thinking they are, these subjects are difficult or challenging. While STEM offers a world of innovation, problem solving, groundbreaking discoveries that shape the future, non-STEM fields provide a venue for creativity, empathy, and a profound impact on society. So keep an open mind and give both parts a chance to reveal their wonders to you. Remember, your journey is just a beginning. So go out there and make it extraordinary. And life isn't just about reaching a final destination, but it's about the journey itself. So embrace every twist and turns that comes with it. With that, thank you for joining me today. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, keep embracing the wonders of both STEM and non-STEM careers. Thank you all.